lives. That's why this podcast was created, to help you grow in these areas. If you aren't already subscribed to the newsletter, go to HealthyWildAndFree.com, click the box at the top right-hand corner to get a free copy of our latest ebook, and you'll be subscribed to be notified about future podcasts. Thanks for subscribing and tuning in. Enjoy. able to do 
might work more efficiently. And as it turned out, I believe it did help me in law school. It helped my grade point average and all that. So um, it was a very practical introduction into the world of meditation. Uh, and over the last 30 years, of course, you can imagine that that's evolved into uh, many, many different uh, other kinds of benefits. For sure. When, so when you started out, it was really kind of more to optimize uh, your your mental cognition and to just really be more effective in law school, basically. Um, as you so you started out, was it 40, 40 minutes a day then? And then over time, did you when did you kind of re- do you meditate eight minutes a day right now, or do you still meditate more than eight minutes? I've been meditating now for over two decades, and. Uh, I meditate every day, and I meditate for different periods of time, but uh, they're usually longer than eight minutes. And uh, one reason I created this program was to get people into a habit of meditation in an easier way than PM did it, which was 40 minutes a day. And they were very um, uh, clear about uh, keeping to that schedule. And I, a lot of people who start out meditating uh, really uh, can't do that kind of time uh, for either time constraints or their lifestyle or they're just not, it's, I don't know if it's such a great way to introduce someone to meditation to make them do something. I'd rather right. invite them. And eight minutes is uh, actually one of the reasons Time Magazine calls it the most American form of meditation, is that eight minutes is the time between two television commercials. And I chose that purposely because my feeling was that, uh, as Americans, we are programmed into these eight-minute attention modules from a very early age. And my desire with eight-minute meditation was to take advantage of that quote-unquote programming so that people could sit for, an eight, for a period of time and, not, and, and be able to devote themselves to concentration and focus uh, with uh, previous experience, which they didn't even know they had. Mm-hmm. You talk about in your book how the practice of meditation over years can encourage the brain to basically rewire itself and to, uh, to be happier. How does that work exactly? You know, I don't know, and um, I don't know if the scientists know, mm-hmm. but if there are some, uh, and, and as we move along uh, in history, a lot more studies are being done on something called neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to uh, reform itself. You know, there was this old theory that the brain was set and that brain cells died and neurons died and that was that, they never regenerated. Well, they're finding now that that's not exactly true. So there's a lot of research being done on this and findings that um, from what I can gather and to be very simple about it uh, without getting into more complicated science, um, it seems that there's an area of the brain called the cerebral cortex which is the part of us that um, uh, where where our happiness area is located. I mean, for want of a better way of saying it. And that by meditating, you're stimulating that area. And that results in changes in the brain in that particular area that can can or might result in your being um, uh, calmer and uh, more relaxed, and when I guess basically if you're calmer and more relaxed, you're going to be happier. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it's interesting how, you know, you, when you started to meditate, for you it was more of a, uh, to improve your memory and your and your cognitive performance, um, but I think everyone kind of has different goals for their, for their mind, for their body, for their spirit, for their overall health and well-being. Uh, can you talk about some of the benefits that you've experienced and then some of the benefits you've seen people experience when it comes to meditation and how it's added value to their lives, whether it be on a mental, physical, or kind of spiritual level? 
Right. Well, I think you touched on, on the three major areas that we live in. We live on, a, in a, on different planes, on a spiritual plane, uh, a mental plane, and a physical plane. And um, meditation is uh, something that can uh, uh, be beneficial to all three of those axes of, uh, of being, so to speak. And uh, I don't know if there's much really to say on it. it uh, you know, I've been around meditators now for over 30 years. I've gone on long retreats. I studied different disciplines such as uh, Zen and Vipassana meditation, which is called Insight now, it's called Mindfulness meditation, and also some Tibetan meditation. And I have found that all of these practices, whatever I've learned from each of the teachers I've been to and the readings I've done, have all informed my character and uh, philosophy of life. I think that you can't not meditating for a period of time and not have the fundamental, your fundamental view of the world change and change for the better. And uh, by the better, I mean um, to change and be, and see the world, real, as, um, really see the world and kind of come out of that dream world we function in most of the time. Hmm. So, so do you feel over time, uh, through and because of meditation, your perception 